Now, Monday's landmark settlement between Korea and Japan on the decades old issue of Japan's sexual enslavement of women before and during World War II. As you might imagine, Korea's rival parties stood on opposite sides of the landmark deal. Adirang News Parliamentary Correspondent Chi Myung Gil joins us from the National Assembly. Uh, Myung Gil, uh, outline the rival parties' positions for us. Konyang, the ruling Senori Party characterized the agreement as significant progress that requires Japan to take specific course of action toward its fulfillment. We welcome Monday's landmark deal to resolve the issue of Korean women forced into sexual slavery for Japanese soldiers during World War II. This is the first time the Japanese government has acknowledged its responsibility, with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe expressing his apology and remorse from the heart. The ruling party said it hopes the agreement will provide Seoul and Tokyo with an opportunity to build trust and begin a new era of bilateral relations. Under the deal, Tokyo has agreed to provide 8.3 million U.S. dollars in toward the establishment of a foundation for the women that Seoul will create. The main opposition, Toburo Democratic Party, said the deal is unacceptable because Japan has accepted only moral, not legal, responsibility for its wartime atrocities toward the women. Monday's deal was humiliating as it failed to specify Japan's legal responsibility. Japan claims it was settled under a bilateral treaty signed in 1965, normalizing diplomatic relations. But Korea says the sex slavery issue was not addressed in the treaty. Flow leader Lee jong said the party is emphasizing Japan's legal responsibility because there is no statute of limitations on crimes against humanity, and such crimes must not go unpunished. Kan Young. Our Chi Myung reporting on the rival party's reactions to Monday's uh, Seoul-Tokyo settlement. Thank you indeed.